Hi, everybody. Welcome to the quarantine series, the quarantine film series. I'm your host, Kabir Segel, coming to you live from the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, great uh, to be back with you again. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in all around the world. Also, special thanks to the people watching downstairs. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and look, this is um, really an effort. The quarantine series is about shining the light on creative people of all types, filmmakers, authors, um, just musicians, these are the people that create the stories that provoke and entertain and challenge us throughout the year. We're appreciating them more now than ever as we're kind of stranded at home together. So if you can support the projects you learn about on this broadcast, and uh, if you have the means, I think also uh, important to help those in your um, local community, the creative community, whether it's local bookshop, local film festivals, try to be there for each other, the artists, artists and audiences, we need each other. Um, this is, I think, the last episode of the year, hooray. Um, you know, we're doing a hundred something, something, something uh, shows. So I want to thank, um, you know, Shane and the incredible team that, um, helps put these together. And thanks for being with us on this long ride throughout the year. And, uh, we started this way back in March, so hard to believe. So this, this, um, a couple of things, if you want to learn, uh, who will be on the show, you know what to do, subscribe to the social media. We're available pretty much on all platforms. Number two, if you have questions, drop a question in the comment field. I don't have to ask all the questions. You can ask questions. You can grill our um, the artists today and ask provocative questions. It's fine. You, you can do what you want to do. Even if you're watching live or on the rebroadcast, drop a comment. Let us know. And then lastly, let us know what you're um, where you're watching from. We have an international edition today of the show. We got Canada in the house. Yes, Canada, and we have Georgia in the house. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Drop a comment. Let us know, and we will try to opine to your questions, comments, and queries. Now, for the best part of the show, we get to meet the terrific artist. And she, she truly is a terrific, um, hyphenated individual. She is a um, actor, uh, actress, producer. And uh, we need to rename the show the Quarantine Hyphenated series after her. Um, she's known for projects such as Fort 10, uh, Guidestones, and Copper. We're going to talk about a project she's um, working with with the CDC. She's a graduate of the Canadian Film Center Actors Conservatory. Sounds very fancy and very, we only bring you people with um, established credentials here on the show. Um, and she started in the Emmy Award winning web series, Guy Sons, which we'll talk about. So please welcome to the show, the maestro herself, Supinder Raich. Welcome. Hi, Kabir. Uh, the the CFC, the, um, the Actors Conservatory, I guess was very elite. It used to be, um, it was in North Toronto and where they housed the actors was in the stables of the, the premises where they used to house the horses. So That's I good. guess it was pretty, yeah. Yeah, you're a constable now uh, yeah. in the stables. So, so um, I first wanna ask you, how, um, how are you doing in the quarantine? How is it affecting um, you and your projects? Oh gosh, it's been um, it's 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 been a whirlwind since March. Um, just in terms of moving all over the place, which I think hasn't been the case. I think for a lot of people in quarantine, where they've sort of been in one place, you know, shelter in place. For for me, I was in Los Angeles in March, and then moved back to Toronto as production sort of dried up um, down there and then move back home to Toronto, just not knowing what the year would hold and um, have been working quite a fair bit as an actor, which is something I didn't expect this year um, and traveling out east to Newfoundland and shooting there and then coming back and then in the new year going back there, which was unexpected. But um, I also did this program um, through the consulate in Los Angeles through the Canadian consulate called the creative um, the content creative accelerator and that was kind of great because I did it with a bunch of people in Los Angeles and in Vancouver and a bunch of other Canadian creatives um, and it normally would have taken place in Los Angeles but because of COVID we were all doing it over Zoom and it was um, it was it was one of the highlights of my quarantine because I got to meet with some pretty exceptional folk in trying to, to pitch sort of another version of the 410 down south. So um, yeah, it's it's been busier than I anticipated. Yeah. How's your quarantine it, been going? It's been busy meeting a lot of people like this. So um, I wanna ask you also about the 
the typical um, day for you in quarantine? Is there a structure? Do you wake up at the same time? How do you sort of make sure it doesn't feel like Groundhog Day? I think the traveling has helped. Um, I don't know. I think that like, I, I think that as in, as somebody who works from home, I'm probably adjusting to it better than most of my friends who had an office job to go to. I think that like, I think that there's a structure to the day without it being the same in terms of, you know, I, I punch the keys, I get a bunch of things done. I get some sort of satisfaction and then I fall asleep. <laughs> is kind of how it goes. Sometimes I'll go for a walk. Sometimes I'll grab a coffee. But other times, like where I was shooting and on set, um, I mean, that's a whole different quarantine experience for people who are working in production right now, which is a weird yeah. experience. Have you had any anyone else sort of outline their um, on yeah. set experiences? Yeah. Sometimes there's a, there, there's a daily nap involved. So sound, it's good that you're yeah, you're getting some snooze time in there if you can. It's it's tough though. Everyone has their own structure, and definitely the daily walk is kind of like an important thing for a lot of folks. Yeah, the daily walk has been a new reverie for me. Um, I don't know. There's some days where I'm just like, oh god, I don't want to leave the house today. But forcing myself to do it is like a day. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's been really, it's been really important. Well, let's, let's talk about some of your great projects. Tell us about 410. What is it about? How did you get involved with it? And uh, and walk us through it. Yeah, so the, the 410 centers itself around a South Asian social media um, influencer wannabe whose life is turned upside down when her father, who's a truck driver, gets arrested for smuggling drugs. And she's got to move home back to her very ethnocentric suburb. Um, to take care of her grandmother and the family business and finds an alternate route to money and power when she realizes that the family trucking business is actually an undercut an underground narcotics empire. And how I got involved with it is um, for myself as an actor, I was just, there were all these parts that I wanted to play, um, darker characters, more nuanced characters that I wasn't getting the opportunity to audition for. And this particular story, you know, I come from a family of truck drivers. Um, my father was a truck driver, my uncles are. And when I was in film school, I started seeing all these stories about Punjabi men within my community being arrested and charged and sort of caught in this um, underground network. And it, and it interested me because there was a part of this world that was very familiar to me and that, you know, the men, they, they looked like my father, they had the same job as him, but there was also sort of this like dark underbelly world that um, really intrigued me. And, and I wanted to delve deeper into that. Um, so I, that's, that's where the story and my interest in it came from. And then, um, and then, so I, I kind of wrote it from, from that point of interest and then also wanting uh, a vehicle for myself as an actor to explore the, the depths of my experience as a South Asian woman that I hadn't been able to in the traditional roles for South Asian actresses that had been available to me at that time. Yeah, no, I hear you. Is it, and what was the response like and the feedback from the audiences who have who have seen it, and especially among those in your community? Varied. Um, it's so funny because I think that like when I'm talking, I can't see you, so it's just like me looking at myself. Uh, there you are. Great. Um, varied. Yeah. Sorry, Kabir, did you say something? We want people to see you. We want and focus on you. So, oh, bring it, bring it back here. I can't, I can't act alone here. Um, it was varied. It like it, d depending on you know, like I, I had some very, uh, you know, orthodox sick people, like people from the community, who really railed against some of the things that I was doing. Um, 
I think when we shine a light on the dark areas of our community, that's that's bound to happen. And I think that I, you know, I took some uh, liberties with my artistic storytelling. And then also like, I think from young South Asian women who were predominantly my audience and who, who I made the show for, um, I think a lot of them saw themselves in Surrey. There's a there's a line in that, that you just showed the picture where we're sitting in the bathtub, and there's this line that Surrey says um, when her her best friend JJ looks over at her and says, "You know, you're you're really pretty." And then Surrey says, "Yeah, pretty for an Indian girl." And he says, "No, you're just pretty." And that line, I think that like those truths are truths that I haven't seen explored in in another series in terms of like that identity and where, where do you fit and you know, what, what is pretty when like in, in the face of like the, the magazines that I grew up with and the images that I grew up idolizing and how important being pretty is um, to your sense of self, I think as, as you're growing up. So yeah. So there's, there's questions that the show asks that I think that um, I needed to ask and I needed to, to consider, and um, I'm still I'm working on the the next iteration of the 410, and those are questions that I'm still you know asking myself and, and figuring out for myself. So um, I don't know if that answers your question with how it landed with with audi audiences. I think it yeah it was definitely varied, um, but ultimately I was okay with the responses, and some were hurtful, and some were um, really supportive, and. I think that that's the best I could have hoped for. Yeah. As, as you're writing, um, how do you, um, what's the, what are the ingredients? Like, are you, do you have like a notebook that you take ideas down of how to turn your, your life into sort of episodes or content? How does, what, what is that process like for you? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it varies. I think there was a lot of research um, just in terms of like t technicalities, you know, of um, what is the product called? How is it moved? How, how does Siri get into that world? And then like technicalities of a thriller, you know, like um, act turns and, and how to keep a thing moving. Um, and then also like just I would go run for runs a lot. I would listen to a lot of like Bhangra and like hip hop and like Punjabi music while I ran to to try to like figure out this world. And and sometimes I would just ask myself questions like how does how does Suri get from point A to point C? You know what is the B? And that would sometimes take a few days to to sort out. And yeah, I have I have I, I keep my notes on my on my phone and sort of jot down things interesting things i was um oh god i heard a great line the other day and i put it in my phone um where somebody was doing somebody a favor and he came home and he told the story and he said you know he said a really interesting thing to me while i was driving him to the store he said you're gonna get a day off of hell for this and like sometimes when i hear things like that i'm like ah oh, fuck that's a great line and i'll and i'll put it I'll jot it down and then that'll make its way somehow somewhere into the writing. Yeah, no, I like how you document in that way. A lot of people ask questions or want to want to know how, how, do, how does the idea come and how do you translate it into your creative um, expression? But I do want to, yeah, I do want to ask you uh, with the limited time we have left about the Guidestones, tell us about this project and uh, what it's about. Same question and how you got involved with it. Oh, with Guidestones. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that was fascinating. So Guidestones was, um, I think it was my first like real acting gig. Um, we, I was so excited because when I booked that, so I auditioned for that show um, for Jay Ferguson. And when they sort of pitched it to me because we were traveling all over the world, we ended up getting two seasons out of it. But for the first season, I'd auditioned for it. And um I think that like before they gave me the job, they sort of sat me down and they warned me <laughs> about the perils of the job, which was, you know, we, I think we, we traveled to Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we traveled to New York. We traveled to India in the first season. There was, it was a big travel show, but a very small crew. And they were sort of like, if you choose to take this job, you're going to be traveling all over the world, which is a plus, but you're going to be doing it with like a crew of like, five other men 
and no hairstylist, no makeup, no wor no wardrobe, like all of that you're responsible for, including like continuity. And then like Sandy, I remember like just had these massive, like two, sometimes two page long monologues, um, which was a lot of exposition, which was a lot of, so the show centers itself around. Kabir, are you familiar with the Georgia Guidestones? You must be. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so the, the show centers itself around, around the Guidestones and, Sandy's trying to figure out who erected them and then somehow it's involved with her own family history and this plot from, you know, this entity to basically destroy the world for the purposes of population control. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a great series and when we were doing it, we were very much, uh, and all those locations you see in these pictures, like we were there, like nothing is green screened, uh, which was really, really fun. And the reason why they did that is because the, you know, the show centers around conspiracy theories. And um, when it was released, it was released as like timed emails that would come into your inbox as the story progressed. And they really wanted people to, because Jay is originally a documentary filmmaker, they really wanted to blur the lines between, um, you know, what's real and what's fiction. So when people were watching it and they, you know, they looked up, Marseille we shot in for example like that location in Marseille and we would be there that it would blur those lines if they couldn't tell if what was happening was real or not um yeah it was it was yeah it was it was a great project and then the world that they created around that in terms of the clues that they would embed and all of these things that they put on um like all over the internet all these like um little clues that they hit, I, that, that Emmy was well deserved and uh, mainly for the, the story that this team told through the series and then through like subsequently the, the world that they created for it online. I know you said it's online. Where can people experience the project um, who are hearing about it here? Where can they watch Guidestones? I think that Guidestones right now is probably, um, it might be on Jay's company website, which is three o'clock TV, as well as I bet, I, I'm sure it's it's on YouTube, all the episodes are there. Um, I wonder if you want guidestones.tv if it's there. And then the, the 410, um, unfortunately is not available in the US yet, um, but it might be soon. Yeah. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah, we're gonna question, how do you choose which projects to get involved with? They're quite different. So how do you know what to spend your time on? Um, I think it, oh God, I think it varies. Um, I mean, like in the beginning of my career, like I was auditioning a lot. So a, a lot of it was just the, the jobs that came to me and I would mostly say yes. Um, I think recently it's, I think if it's just, if it, do I see value in investing in this character? Um, I, I was at Sundance a while ago and there was an actor that I heard say, you know, like uh, before he takes on a project, he, th he thinks about his body within that role and within that story and, and, and the, the story that that body tells. And I think that that's, that's sort of been an evolution for, for me as an artist is, you know, when I see something, it's like, what do I have to add? And a lot of the time I'll get an audition and I'll just read it and say, yeah, I don't know that I have anything to add to this. Um, so the things that I say yes to are very much when I read it and I think, okay, here's where I think I could put some of myself or some of my story or add to the story to to make it better. Because if I don't know how to make it better, if I don't know how to lift it, um, I'm probably not gonna do a good job and they're probably not gonna enjoy having me. So. Yeah, I hear you. And, and let's talk uh, real quickly about your project, Sort Of, with the CBC. What is that about? So Sort Of is a wonderful show. Um, it's about a queer, it's written by Bilal Baig, who's a queer South Asian artist, and it's their sort of coming of age story within their, within their community and then within the South Asian community and I play their older sister. And um, it's just this wonderful show that really I think at the heart of it is the boxes that we put ourselves into, you know, like I am an actor and a filmmaker. I am, uh, uh, I, I host this show and 
how those how we change how we how we put ourselves in those boxes and how we take ourselves out of those boxes and i think the name implies a lot that most of the time we're just sort of figuring it out yeah no, i appreciate sharing that so um everyone please check out um Stupinder online on our social media there it is Stupinder underscore w follow her like her stuff check out her projects be a fan thank you so much Stupinder, for being on the show thanks bear i just followed you too cool it's a love fest here all right so that's that's it for the year that's the wrap Thanks for tuning in. If you want to know who'll be on the show, you can subscribe to us on social media, just like Zupinder just did. And um, take care of yourself out there. It's going to be a tough winter. Um, and take care of the art because it will take care of you. Um, happy uh, holidays. Happy New Year. We will see you on, on the other side. Bye, everyone.